behavior. Kailangan ba natin i-classify ang criminals at kailangan ba natin intindihin ang criminal behavior na tinatawag? So, for the reason of coming up with programs and for the reason of uh, dealing with the criminals or how should we deal with criminals it is necessary for us to understand the criminal behavior as well as the different classification because not all person has the same behavior and the same not all criminals have the same behavior we must understand because uh, as of now criminologists is founded in the positive school no we ought to understand criminal behavior and come up with a plan on how we are going to deal with them or treat their situation because they are believed to be sick mentally or physically there is a need for us to know the different classification of criminals parang sakit lang yan eh. kung halimbawa we don't know the classification of illnesses then we don't know how we're going to respond in that given problem so for example Pare-parehas ba ang treatment natin for diseases? Pag meron kang ubo, I will give you paracetamol. Meron kang diabetes, I will give you paracetamol. Uh, meron kang high blood, I will give you paracetamol. ba? Makes sense. Hindi ganun ang treatment natin when it comes to medicine. So different illnesses has different way of treatment. So the same is true with criminals. Different classification of criminals has different approach and has different way of treating them. So that is why we need to classify criminals. And we need to understand the classification of criminals. Actually, there's a lot of classification of criminals than or provided by different criminologists. Marami yan. Depende kung sino ang pinapakinggan mo. I think most of the known personality field of criminology internationally has their own classification of criminals. So today, we're going to talk about the classification of criminals provided by Abrahamsen. So these are the classification provided by Abrahamsen. Classification of criminals. The number one is yung tinatawag natin acute criminals followed by situational criminals associational criminal accidental criminals and neurotic criminals okay let's talk about them one by one so first is we have acute criminals who are acute criminals actually uh I can say that we are all, or we can be all classified as an acute criminal. Tell me, a person who never had committed a crime, I believe there is none. Because how do, we, how do we define crime again? Crime pertains or refers to an act that violates a law. So if there is a law that was violated, that action is already classified as crime correct so tell me a person who never violated any law i believe there's none even you or me at some point violated a certain law like for example jaywalking what is jaywalking so crossing in a part of the road that is not intended for crossing is jaywalking. Yung pagtawid sa kalsada, hindi yung mga tumatawid na lang basta sa kalsada na hindi gumagamit ng pedestrian lane. I believe that yun pa lang is all of us is guilty already of violating the jaywalking law. So, we have violated already a rules, regulation, whether that is a municipal ordinance, provincial ordinance, city ordinance, or a national law then we are already guilty of a crime kasi we committed an act 
that violates the public law. So, guilty tayong lahat. Ano pa ba? Uh, intellectual property code. <laughs> Whoever downloaded a movie or a video or a music in a social media or internet without paying any is considered as illegal download. And of course, that is punishable. No, parang nagnanakaw ka na rin. Kasi you take the property of others without asking permission to them, that is already a crime. No. Sino ang mahilig manood ng pirated movies? O yan, hatay is guilty for that. Kasi nung wala pa yung mga Netflix and so on, majority of us bumibili sa palengke, no? bumibili ng mga DVD and so on, which is known to be pirated. So, we are already committing a crime by purchasing those pirated CDs and VCDs and so on. Even clothings, di ba? Mga suot natin, mga imitation ng Nike. Ano pa? Uh, imitation na sapatos. O, lahat. Mga ginagamit natin, imitation. Bumibili ka ng mga imitation. That is already considered as a crime. So, all of us is definitely can be classified as an acute criminals. Yeah? Acute criminals. Oh, no, one is, no one is actually innocent when it comes to uh, violating law. Because at a certain point in our life, we had already committed a crime. So, what kayong umasta, you never committed any act that is considered as a crime. We are all considered as acute criminal. Okay? So, however, uh, we are committing crimes that are less serious in nature. Yeah. Less serious in nature. Wala namang masyadong naagrabyado. So, uh, we are not in prison yet. Maybe. <laughs> Umamin. So, I'm not saying this as a confession. I'm just discussing this for the purpose of academic discussion. Okay? So, uh, yung, uh, ano yun. <laughs> Okay, so we move on to the next classification of criminal suggest, which is the situational criminal. Who are situational criminals? These are persons who commits a crime when the given situation provokes him to do the crime. Diba? Out of jealousy, celos, nakakomit ka ng crime. Out of anger, sa so sobrang galit, nakakomit ka ng crime. So, because of the situation, because of your situation, you committed an act that is considered as a crime. Sobrang galit ka. So what did you do? Binaril mo. Tinaga mo. Sinaksak mo. You are considered as a situational criminal. O hindi naman kaya is walang wala ka na. O, wala kang pera. Wala kang mautangan. Wala kang pwedeng pagkunan ng pangtustos sa, sa pangangailangan mo or sa pangangailangan ng pamilya mo. So, anong ginawa mo? Ha? Pwedeng nagnakaw ka. Pwedeng, pwedeng nang hold up ka. So, you are considered as a situational crime. Basta ang tandaan lang natin when it comes to situational crime is they commit when the situation provokes them to do such thing. Kung yung sitwasyon nila or ng buhay nila ang nag sa kanila, para gawin yung ginawa nilang krimen, then that, or they are considered as a situational crime. Uh, marami sa atin ganito. Matitino naman sila. However, nakakomit sila ng hindi natin inaasahan. Siguro dahil sa sobrang kahirapan, kaya siya nagnakaw. Siguro dahil sa sobrang selos, kaya niya nabugbog o napatay yung kanyang uh, asawa. So those are all situational criminals. 
Another classification is associational criminal. Okay, the key word here, association. Diba we have the word peer pressure. Especially sa mga kabataan ngayon. No? Kung sino-sino yung kasama mo, there is a tendency kasi na mahawa ka doon sa pag-uugali nila. Peer pressure is very strong factor to criminality. Let's say for example, siya ayaw niya talagang mag-commit ng crime but, but because peer pressure coming from his friends or family or loved ones nagawa niya yung crime. So they are considered as associational crime. Actually, there is a theory discussing association in relation to criminality. No, kaya minsan uh, mag-ingat tayo sa mga sinasamahan natin because there is a tendency that their behavior will be adopted by us na magaya natin yung kanilang behavior. Okay? Na matularan ma natin yung kanilang pinaggagawa. Why? Because syempre lagi natin silang kasama. No? Lagi natin nakikita yung mga ginagawa nila and there's a tendency that someday Ganun na rin ang gawin natin. Kasi kung ano yung lagi natin nakikita, there's a big tendency na yun din yung kopyahin natin at gawin natin at maging ugali natin. Which is okay lang if that's for good. But if we're talking about criminality, then wag naman sana. Kayo, meron kayong mga kakilala na medyo ibang ugali. Ngayon na yung oras para mag-isip-isip kayo. You better find a new set of friends or a new set of uh, environment because if you're associating with persons who have criminal tendencies and so on then there is a big tendency that you will become a criminal too now let's proceed to other classification of criminal which is the accidental criminal so by the word accident so we know already you have an idea already kung sino ang criminal na ito or sino-sino yung mga criminal na ito. Accidental. They commit crime by mistake. Maybe you're driving carefully. Then biglang may tumawid na bunggo mo. Accidental. No? As long as nag-iingat ka and so on, that's accidental. As long as there is no imprudence or negligence as we discussed. No? Kung walang imprudence at walang negligence, uh, accidental yan. Are they exempted? Yes. No? They, they, they are exempted. Pero kung merong negligence and imprudence, they are not exempted. In squatter areas, commonly nangyayari yan. No? For example, brand out sa isang bahay, brand out sa isang barangay. Ngayon, gumamit ng gasera, gumamit ng kandila, natulugan yung gasera, natulugan yung kandila, which caused fire to broke out. Person, who left out the burnt candle or yung gasera na yan can be considered as an accidental criminal. Are they guilty? Or can they be uh, also considered as guilty for, for their action? And then the answer can be uh, it depends if there is imprudence and negligence. So that's for the accidental criminal. Now let's move into the last classification of criminal according to Abrahamson, the neurotic criminal. When we talk about neurotic criminals, these are persons who commits crime due to behavioral or mental disorder. Ito yung mga may sira or may diferensya sa pag-ugali or merong diferensya sa pag-iisip. Like for example, maniac. Na yung maniac na tinatawag the uh, irresistible urge to do something. So let's say, for example, you have kleptomania. Meron kang irresistible urge na kumuha ng, ng mga bagay-bagay regardless of its monetary value. So kahit simpleng bagay lang, wala namang halaga, talagang kung trip mong kunin, kukunin mo, then that is considered as a disorder. And that is kleptomania. So, see, etong mga classification criminals na to, you cannot really say that they, they are criminal or they should be punished. No? Kasi ang, ang reason nyo dyan, bakit mo naman paparusahan yung tao na may sira-sira nga sa pag-iisip? For example, ano, yung baliw, binugbog ka. 
That can happen. Na, na meron mga ganun na may mga sira sa ulo, nakakapanakit sila. You cannot go to to the police station and said, "Okay, pahuli ko nga yung baliw na yun kasi nanuntok siya." The, the treatment for that is that kunin yung baliw na yan, but not you will not be subjected to punishment or imprisonment kasi nga meron siyang diferensya sa pag-iisip. At dapat siya iintindihin. Or they cannot really punish those types of person. These are the classification of criminals according to Abraham Sen. So, balikan lang po natin. We have acute criminals. Hmm, tayo yan. Those who, commit, uh, those who commit crimes that are not serious in nature and they are not a persistent criminal. Well, minsan, minsan lang. Then we have situational criminals. They commit crimes based on the given situation. If uh, the situation is favorable and the situation is very tempting, then they commit the crime. Then we have uh, associational, yan yung peer pressure, the result of peer pressure, yung mga nakakasama natin, hinahawaan nila yung pag-uugali natin, and so on. So they are considered as associational criminal. Accidental criminal, right? Accident. For their punishment, we should be assessing first if they really had committed the crime by uh, negligence or imprudence. If none of those two qualifying term was uh, performed, or if none of those two words uh, is uh, present, then definitely the person should not be punished. The neurotic criminal. So neurotic criminal, these are the person who commits crime due to mental or behavioral disorder. Well, as you can see, I'm not saying that acute criminals, kung sino yung mga karapat dapat parusahan sa kanila. We have here, acute criminals. Do they need to be punished or not? <laughs> Tayo yun. Kailangan ba natin maparusahan sa mga simpleng, uh, simpleng mga criminal acts lang natin? Like for example, uh, yung mga sinabi ko kanina, bumili ka ng pirated DVD. Do we need to punish those behavior? Okay, so basically, as in my own opinion, even small things should be punished. They should be punished because uh, we are rational individual. Now, if we commit small things, small acts that are considered as crime, there is a tendency that we will level up and commit crimes that are serious in nature also in the near future. So. I'm not saying that you should be put behind bars. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na pag ganito, na pag nag-commit ka ng mga less serious crime, like for example, yung mga pagtawid dyan sa mga hindi naman tabang tawiran, no? and uh, pagbili ng mga bagay na pirated and so on, hindi ko naman sinasabing makulong ka. I'm, I'm just, what I'm saying is that there should be at least a punishment that is equivalent to the act committed. For example, na bawat CD na binili mo, you pay the original price para magtanda ka. And at the same time, parusahan din yung nagbebenta kasi sila naman talaga may dahilan. No? Kung wala silang binibenta, wala kang bibilhin. So unahin nila yung mga yun. Tama? Okay? So we have uh, situational crime or criminals. Do they need to be punished or not? Yes. They, they still need to be punished. Pero may pagkatandaan. Associational, much more. No? They, uh, sa lahat ng dapat maparusahan, sila yung dapat maparusahan. Para nang sa ganun, matuto sila. No? Na umiwas sa mga maling tao. O yung mga kasama nila. Okay? So, dapat maturuan sila. Depende. The, the punishment will depend, of course, on the crime committed. So, pag magumagaan lang, bagal lang din yung parusa. Pag medyo seryoso na, dapat mabigat din o kasing bigat din nun yung kaparusahan na tatanggapin nila. Accidental crime, as I've stated, depende. If they acted with negligence or imprudence, then they should be punished. If not, then they should not be punished. Much more on neurotic. So, uh, that's with regards to the plan.